Hey folks, welcome to my first video in a series of videos for CS0 Intro to Java. In this video, I'm just going to cover the very basics of our IDE. We're going to be using IntelliJ in these videos. I'm going to talk about how to create a new project, how to open a project. I'm going to talk about the JDK, what it is, and how to set up the IDE so that it recognizes the JDK. And we'll get started on our first Java project. Before you watch this video, you're going to need to install IntelliJ and Java's most recent JDK. JDK stands for Java Development Kit. It is essentially a, a, a large chunk of software that you are going to install on your machine. It's going to give you all the tools that you need to write code in Java. You'll also need the IDE. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's your code editor. It's where you're going to write your code. It's where you're going to debug your code. It's where you're going to compile and run your code. It's kind of a one-stop shop that does all the stuff you need except for solve your own problems and write the code for you. All right, let's get started. Now, I've opened uh, IntelliJ on my computer many times. I've opened a lot of projects and all that kind of stuff. So the, when I open IntelliJ, I get this panel here but my panel is going to look a little different than yours. I, I've got a whole bunch of projects here that have been opened at some point. You're not going to have that yet. That's going to be empty. But what you will have is you'll have these things here. Create new project, import project, open, and check out from version control. I'm going to start by creating a new project, and then I'm going to show you how to open a project. Create new project. All of your Java code that you're going to be that you're going to write is going to come in the form of a project. The project is going to wrap up all of your Java files, all of your bytecode, um, and all of the the settings and things like that that IntelliJ needs to um, properly compile and run your code. We're coding in Java, so when we create a new project, we're going to choose the type of uh, application we're going to write. We're going to write Java. We're not writing JavaFX or Android or doing anything with Maven or Gradle or anything like that. So we just choose Java. Next, you may or may not see anything here in this bar that says Project SDK. SDK is short for Software Development Kit. That is that, that set of software that you need that helps you um, write the code in the language that you're writing. We're writing in Java, so we're going to use JDK. Let's Take a look at how to search for a JDK and um, configure the project to that JDK. So you may or may not have anything in this little drop-down menu here. If you don't, you're, gonna, you're going to browse for something. I'm going to go to New. And what we're going to do is we're going to search for the home directory for the JDK. It's going to be different on every computer depending on how you install. By default, JDK wants to install in the program files in C colon if you have a Windows machine. Here's the deal. I'm going to be demonstrating on a Windows machine for everything in this class. Um, it's, it's my presumption that you know how to work the file system on your computer. You should have a good set of basic computer skills coming into this course, so I'm not going to talk about how to browse for files. I'm not going to show you how to work your computer. If you have a Mac or a Linux machine or anything like that, I'm not going to show you how to browse your file system to find a file. You should already know that. I'm demonstrating through Windows, so if you have a Windows machine, you can follow along step by step for the most part. If you have a Mac, you're going to kind of have to um, fumble through that on your own. Anyways, on Windows, um, C colon is where all of the installations and things like that are usually stored, unless you um, specifically say, I want to install it on another drive. So I'm going to expand C colon, and by default, Java is going to either install in program files x86 or program files. If you download it and install Java JDKs uh, or the JDK 64 uh, bit, distribution, it's going to be under program files. If you did the x86 distribution, it's going to be under x86. I have it as the 64-bit version because I've got a 64-bit OS, so I'm going to expand that and I'm going to look for Java. And I find Java right down here. 
In the Java folder, I'm going to find any JDKs that are installed. This machine only has JDK 10 installed. Um, if you just installed JDK as of this time when I made this video, you probably have JDK 11. Um, really, there's not much difference as far as we're concerned in CS0 for what happened between JDK 10 and JDK 11. As far as we're concerned, it's going to work the same. So if you have 11, fine. If you have 10, fine. If you have all the way back to 8, that's fine too. Uh, so we're going to click on JDK 10. And we'll click OK. Now, that's going to show up up here in this drop-down bar. You're, you're going to see I've got two now options for JDK 10 um, because I, you know, I just configured it twice. You'll probably only have one. So you just have to click on JDK 10 and that's going to be the SDK that you're going to use for this project. All right, let's move on. Now they got the SDK chosen, we can set up the, um, set up the project. So you just click next through these things. We're not going to use a template. Now we get to this and we've got to browse for a location where we're going to put the file. I'm going to put these on the desktop. I have a folder on desktop called Intro to Java Projects. So I'm going to put it in there. If you don't have a folder on the desktop for your Java projects, you might make a new folder, you know, click on this new folder button, kind of like um, just click on desktop, click on the new folder button, and name it maybe something like CS0 Projects, and click OK. And you'll notice that our path got uh, a new directory appended to it. So if you don't know, this thing here is a path. A path is going to be a list of directories that will point us to where our file is stored. Our file is going to be stored furthest to the right, so in a folder called CS0 Projects. That is nested in a folder called Directory, which is nested in a folder called Cgorl, which is nested in a folder called Users that exists on the C drive. This is a path. Paths are going to be used a lot, and we're going to use them in this class for file I.O. type stuff later on. But we have to choose the directory where we want our projects to be stored. It's really important that you know where you're putting things so that you can come back and find them later. So I usually put them in some place that's easy to find. I put a folder on the desktop. As you can see, my desktop is a total mess. I got all kinds of directories on here for all sorts of different things. Um, it might look like a mess, but each of these directories holds different things that I know what's in there. So CS0 is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to click OK. And now I need to name my project. So CS0 is going to be the folder where I put all my projects. So if I want to create a project with a new name, I'm going to append a new directory onto the end of this path. So go backslash, which is going to append a new directory. And I'm going to call this one first project. And you can see when I append that to the end, it creates that up here on project name. So that's actually my project name, is first project now. Now we're ready to go. I can click finish. And then it's going to say if the project doesn't exist, the project directory, blah, 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 CS0 projects slash first project does not exist. It will be created by IntelliJ. That means IntelliJ is going to create that folder for us. It's going to create all the files in that folder necessary for creating a Java project. Click OK. All right, so now we have our Java project. This is our IDE. The IDE, as I said before, is the place where we're going to write the code. You can't see the code editor right now, but you can see the context where everything's going to go. An IDE is like any other piece of software that's got a series of, of menus. Um, it has over here a project browser that's going to show you all of the directories in your project. You can expand and contract them. It's got this thing that says external libraries, which is going to have our JDK. Remember I said our JDK is a series of software that we need in order to write Java code? Well, here it all is. We've got all of these libraries right here that are going to contain pieces of software that other people wrote that we are going to depend on to write our code. Okay, so you can see the JDK 10 is attached to it. If you write Java with other types of things, like let's say you wanted to do something with, I don't know, Java effects, for example, 
it would also add another library in here, which would contain all the things for JavaFX. That's what the external libraries is. It's going to hold all of your dependencies. Right here is our project folder. Project folder is going to contain an ID, IDF folder, which is just going to have these files, which set up the initial conditions for your workspace. It's going to have a source folder and an IML. The source folder is where we're going to put all of our living, breathing Java code that we write. So if you want to create a new Java file, and let's do that right now, we'll right click on source, go new, Java class. Now we've got to give it a name. And this might seem like it's not important to you, um, but it is. Naming a project, we have to stick to very strict conventions. Now there are some hard rules for naming a Java class, and then there are some conventions. Hard rules are those things that if you break them, your project just won't compile. And then conventions are rules that if you break them, your colleagues are just going to think you're a fool. So um, let's talk about the, the hard rules and let's talk about the convention. First, hard rules. Java by default has to start with um, a non, let's say, we got to start it with an alphabetic character. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so on and so forth. You can't start it with a number. You can't start it with a special character symbol. We've got to start it with a letter. Now, there are some other rules in there, but we don't need to worry about those today. For example, you can technically start it with an underscore, but you're never going to do that. You can technically start it with the dollar symbol, but you're never going to do that. Java classes will always start with a letter. Now, that is one of our syntax or hard rules. One of our conventions is that we always start Java classes with an uppercase letter, and then we follow all characters after that with, with uh, camel case. So here's what that looks like. My first project. Uppercase leading, and then if you have multiple words in it, the first character in every word is always uppercase. The rest of it is lowercase. We call it camel case because it's got these humps. Now, you don't have to name your projects like this. Your code will still compile. You won't get any syntax errors. But what you will have is um, a bunch of grumpy coworkers because they're going to expect that class names are uppercase. And they're going to expect that other identifiers are lowercase. And if there is any confusion there, it makes your code hard to read, it makes you a difficult person to work with, and nobody's going to want to work with you. So let's stick to convention and have all of our class names uppercase leading, camel case thereafter. Click OK. This is going to create our Java file. If we look in the source folder, it now exists. This is a Java class. Java class is the code that you write that is then going to give instructions to the computer and, and make things happen. You're going to see some things that are really important to you. One, this thing up here is my class name. This whole thing is my class header. The class header is going to essentially tell uh, Java how this class is going to behave. It tells it what it is. This class is it's just a class and it's called my first project. Now, you'll see that the file name over here, when you created the file, this name here is in agreement with this. In other words, they're exactly the same. If I accidentally spell this incorrectly, you can see that an error message pops up. It's going to say, my first class is public, should be declared in a file name, my first class project.java. Well, it's not. It's in my first class project. If these things don't agree, you've got a syntax error. It's a compile time error. Your, your program won't compile. It won't run. It's just broken. Now, um, ID, the IntelliJ IDE, when you generate a Java file, it automatically gives them the same name. But if you were to write this in another uh, code editor, like maybe just Notepad or Notepad++, it doesn't do that thing for you. You actually have to write the class header yourself. And if you have a typo in the class header that doesn't agree with the file name, you've got a problem. And the IDE won't tell you. IntelliJ does a lot of things for us to fix problems and tell us where there are problems. That's one of the reasons why I use it as a teaching tool. We're going to use a lot of these hints that IntelliJ gives us and a lot of the tool tips to help us solve our problems. All right, so this right here is our class definition. Everything in between these two braces are going to tell 
the computer instructions on um, what it needs to do for your software that you're writing. Inside of here, we're always going to start off with the main method. I'm not going to talk about what everything is there on the main method. Just know that this line has to look exactly like this every time. And if you have any of that part wrong, you're going to have issues. This is like our launch pad for a Java program. Java is always going to look for the main in order to launch a file and, and compile it and run it. If it doesn't have a main, it's not going to do it. So all of the stuff to launch our file is going to go inside of the main. That's not to say that everything in our Java program is going to go into the main. In fact, by the time we get to this course, we're going to have almost nothing in the main at all. We're going to do all of our programming elsewhere in other methods and other classes, and then we're just going to launch those things in the main. But for now, we're going to do a lot of our programming in the main. Let's just do a very basic program here that's going to give us a greeting. This right here is an output statement, system.out.println. It's going to take into its parameter, these parentheses, a string literal. A string literal is going to be a series of characters surrounded by these double quotes. String literals are things that are used in programming everywhere. They're one of the most uh, widely used data type in almost any language. And we just use them like this. And we often make typos, as you can see. If you follow my videos, you'll notice that I often make typos. I don't care. So I've got this, this system out println statement that says hello world. And what's going to happen when I run this is it's going to give me a greeting in the console. So how do we run these things? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. We can click on one of these two play buttons. We can go up to the run menu and choose, um, and, uh, choose run, and that'll do our initial build. I just like to do it really quickly by clicking on one of these play buttons right here and choosing run. And the first time through, it's going to build the, the project, it's going to compile it, and then it's going to run it. We'll get into what all those steps are in another video. So you can see down here in the console, it gives me my greeting. Whatever I put inside here, prints out down here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make another one. And I'm going to run it again. And I can click on this button now. And it's going to run. And it says, hello world, my name is Charlie. Well, there you have it. This is your introduction to the IDE. We're going to get more in-depth into this IDE in future videos. We'll talk about um, some of the uh, live debugging type things, some of the messages that it gives us. We'll talk about how to read those error messages. We'll talk about how to use this thing called the debugger in future videos. Um, but for now, let's just leave it at this. You've got your first Java class. You've got some greetings to the world. We talked about how to set up the IDE, how to set up a project. In the next video, we're going to start off by learning how to open an existing project file. Thanks for watching, and I hope you stay tuned for the rest of the videos. Have a good one.